Forbidden Kinship, Secrets of Love in Ancient Rome In the heart of eternal Rome, amid its grand empire and legendary tales, unfolds a story, a narrative woven with passion, controversy, and the forbidden dance of kinship. As we explore the bygone days of this ancient civilization, we find ourselves in a society where art, politics, and family ties were intricately connected. Today, we journey through Roman perspectives on the taboo practice of incest. The Romans, masters of governance and builders of an empire, passed down the term incest from their Latin lexicon. From incestum, meaning impurity or impiety, the term referred to acts violating moral, religious, or legal boundaries. For instance, breaking a Vestal's vow of chastity was considered incestum, a legal charge against her and the man involved, whether consensual or forced. The breach of a Vestal's virginity disrupted Rome's pact with the gods and often came with foreboding signs. Accusations of incestum against Vestal sometimes coincided with political unrest, hinting at potential political motives. Notably, Marcus Licinius Crassus faced accusations of incestum involving a Vestal who shared his surname, seeking a controversial marriage for property acquisition. Surprisingly, Crassus was acquitted, revealing the complex interplay of politics and societal norms in ancient Rome. In 113 BC, another trial involved three Vestal virgins and a network of men from the Roman elite accused of incestum. Among slaves, incestum wasn't recognized, but after gaining freedom, their marriages followed regulations similar to connubium among free persons. Knowledge of a Vestal virgin was considered incestum and was punishable by death. In Roman legal understanding, incestum wasn't determined by the form of marriage but by the prohibited sexual connection between parties due to consanguinity or affinity. Punishments for incest varied, in direct line incest, both parties were punishable, while in other cases, only the man faced penalties. The punishment often involved banishment, akin to consequences for adultery. Concubinage between close kinsfolk was treated similarly to marriage. Unlike Greeks who could legally marry siblings, Rome regarded incest as a religious aberration. Yet, there was an implicit acceptance among ruling elites, sometimes overlooking members' marriages to female relatives for inheritance, financial advantage, or political alliances. This was evident after Emperor Claudius married his brother's daughter, Agrippina. However, the acceptance of certain incestuous unions didn't mean widespread practice or social approval. The state didn't punitively intervene, leaving them to family discretion. Beneath legal tolerances, Romans viewed incest with moral disapproval and divine laws. Though no written laws punished incest beyond mild exile or social disgrace, Romans believed some acts were so inherently wrong that legislation wasn't needed to prohibit them. In Rome's cultural narrative, accusations of incest became weapons against rivals. The Roman polemicist condemned the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt for their application of incestuous practices, deeming them barbaric due to their engagement in sibling marriages. Roman gods and goddesses were entangled in an incestuous ballet, like Jupiter and Juno, rulers of the heavens, who were not only married but also shared kinship as siblings. The genealogy of gods involved in relationships with siblings painted a picture of divine amorality. For example, Pluto, lord of the underworld, known as Hades by the Greeks, kidnapped and later married his niece Proserpina through a cunning plan that involved a pomegranate. The poet Ovid, known for his narrative poem The Metamorphoses, spun stories of incest. For example, Mira, the mother of Adonis was turned into a tree after committing an illicit act of love with her father. In another tale, Princess Biblis wept into becoming a stream due to unrequited love for her twin brother Conus. Those tales are threads in Ovid's tapestry exploring forbidden desires. Marshall, another author, humorously portrayed incestual relationships among the common folk and their stepmothers in his epigrams. Accusations of incest cast shadows over Rome's politicians and emperors. Publius Clodius Pulcher, a powerful politician and legal reformer, faced accusations of forbidden relationships with his three sisters and for infiltrating in a Vestal sacred celebration with a disguise.
According to the biographer Suetonius, Julius Caesar had a controversial wet dream involving his mother after crossing the Rubicon, deeming it a favorable omen. Emperor Augustus, Rome's first emperor, confronted accusations from many political rivals who claimed he secured his position through inappropriate relations with his uncles. Rumors circulated about Emperor Caligula's romantic inclinations towards his sister Drusilla. Caligula, who held a notable fondness for Drusilla, went to the extent of deifying her and publicly mourning her death as though he were a widower. Rumors persisted that their relationship extended beyond familial affection, with suggestions of a romantic involvement during their youth. Despite the uncertainty of the nature of their bond, it was undeniably close, with Caligula treating Drusilla as if she were his legal wife, even during her marriage to another. Some historians propose that Caligula's motivations may have extended beyond personal desire, suggesting a deliberate attempt to model the Roman lineage after Hellenistic monarchs, where marriages between ruling brothers and sisters were a tradition rather than scandalous affairs. Rumors surrounding Caligula and Drusilla may also have originated from the breaking of Roman dining traditions in Caligula's household. Typically, sisters would take turns holding the position of honor at banquets, but Caligula seemingly reserved this place exclusively for Drusilla, possibly indicating his desire to showcase her prominently in public. Suetonius asserted that Caligula lived in habitual incest with all his sisters, claiming that they were once caught together by their grandmother, Antonia. Drusilla's death in 38 AD, likely due to an illness prevalent in Rome at the time, profoundly affected Caligula. He conducted her burial with the honors befitting an Augusta and declared her a goddess, Diva Drusilla, deifying her as a representation of Venus. Caligula also instituted a period of mourning during which certain activities became capital crimes. A year after Drusilla's death, Caligula named his daughter Julia Drusilla in her memory. While the infamous Emperor Nero, often depicted as an arsonist and an incestuous deviant in historical narratives, has been the subject of sensationalized stories that contribute to his infamous reputation. These tales, however, are rooted solely in ancient rumors rather than verified facts. One scandalous narrative involves Nero and his mother being carried through Rome in a litter, emerging with suspicious stains on his clothes, fueling speculations of incestuous relations. Another provocative twist in the rumors revolves around Nero taking a mistress who strikingly resembled his mother, adding to the intrigue surrounding his personal life. These stories, while entertaining, can be contextualized within the unusual political circumstances of Nero's ascent to power at the age of 16. His mother, Agrippina, wielded significant influence and sought to assert herself as Nero's guardian, further fueling speculation and gossip among the Roman populace. The cultural preconception that a woman could only gain political power through underhanded or immoral means contributed to the rumors surrounding Agrippina's role. As Nero began to distance himself from Agrippina and show affection to Papia Sabina, rumors intensified. One particularly scandalous tale suggested that Agrippina propositioned her son in a state of inebriation, a narrative that remains uncertain in its authenticity. Emperor Commodus, known for his extravagant lifestyle, frequented taverns and brothels. He indulged in excessive feasting during the day and engaged in abominable luxuries at night, reportedly maintaining relationships with as many as 300 females and males for detestable purposes. Like Caligula, he was accused of committing incest with all his sisters. Whether these accounts are true or mere rumors, they underscore the enduring social taboo surrounding incest in ancient Rome. In the shadowy corners of the Roman Forum and the opulent villas of the emperors, the forbidden ties of incest left an indelible mark on the city's history. The echoes of these stories serve as whispers through time, reminding us that even in the heart of one of the greatest empires the world has known, struggles with forbidden desires were as ancient as the stones that paved the streets of Rome.